Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. In the celebration of Easter, which is this Sunday, joining by Passover, a Jewish holiday for many Jewish people around, and Good Friday, which is the another traditional holiday which we can't eat red meat and all. I decided to review the animated feature The Prince of Egypt which is an animated adaptation of the book of Exodus following a biblical story of Moses who started out as an Egyptian prince eventually discovers his true identity as a Hebrew and becoming an ultimate leader he trails uh, several Hebrew slaves who actually had worked for these Egyptian kings of the Egyptian uh, king, the uh, pharaoh, joined by his queen, also has a son, you know, Ramesses, with all the guards and soldiers around who hired those slaves to build uh, Egyptian temples and all, to actually let them, to actually let his people go, so they can be able to move on to their lives have the freedom they choose and also and also uh, have a lot of conflict that's going around between him and his brother and if that was the case he gets a messenger of God who's telling him to do his job and you know, using his staff that controls um, many uh, civil tricks you know plagues and all yeah. okay and I bought this DVD at Big Lots uh, last year uh, it was for free bucks I know there's a blu-ray that came out even though they use a 35 millimeter print um, all of which were done traditionally with hand-drawn animation blending in with CGI both 2D and 3D so it looks particularly stunning and spectacular than ever before with all these beautiful lush colors incredibly breathtaking and compelling and the story alone as historically accurate as possible it's truly um, religious and biblical as well told even though they had to take the risk to not try to do some major changes but I know they had to do what they can for its short running time yeah. so I, I know the blu-ray um, for that release is basically the same transfer as the DVD should be but only it's upgraded uh, I know there was supposed to be like a 4k remaster some, somehow I think they must have found it when they were doing a a film festival so they'd be able to show for its 20th anniversary at the time sadly I wish they would use that um, or perhaps they were going to use uh, digital files to actually put on under release but they never bought it but that's okay I, I sense this would be a significant upgrade but maybe it might not be as stunning as they think but it's the best they could do Yeah. And it has all the features, as you can see. Yeah, it even has the trailers, which they took it off from the Blu-ray release. But all of all, um, that's what that's what we got. Now, um, keep this in mind: the Prince of Egypt was the second animated feature after Ants which is their first CGI animated film under Pacific Data Images that they merged uh, secretly um, years later um, after its success with um, Shrek um, but before Shrek even came along though <laughs> of course um, but this was the first film to have traditional animation um, blending in with CGI 
So they have to do whatever they can to provide it. Because Jeffrey Katzenberg came up with the idea of actually suggesting to do a film adaptation of t The Ten Commandments from 1956, which had Charlton Heston, hoping that people would understand it in a whole different way for many families around, even ones that are either religious or not. Um, he was going to do that for Disney because he was a chairman at the time, but Michael Eisner refused not to. They thought it was just too risky to take the chance. Or maybe it just wasn't well put for Disney. Because you know how Disney is. They want to be more family friendly as they could. Um, so what really helped the film was that he was joined by Steven Spielberg. You know, who's a writer and director. And his uh, production company, uh, Album Entertainment. And he's also joined in by film producer and music uh, producer as well, David Geffen. And together they formed DreamWorks uh, in 1994. This was going to be their new studio to provide many movies that they're going to produce. I mean, with the first film being The Peacemaker with George Clooney and Nicole Kidman. Joining by Mouse Hunt and uh, joining by Amistad, which this was his first film from the production company that Spielberg has ever done. Yeah, and then we have Mouse Hunt, you know, Polly, Small Soldiers, Deep Impact, which is co produced with Paramount Pictures, which would later become part of it because of Biocom. Uh, Saber Private Ryan, uh, among others. So, and um, they thought this would be a good idea to actually hire several of the animators, um, all of which had worked for Disney and a Amblimation. It's an animated studio from Album Entertainment. Just trying to get all the details exactly right in animated form. You know, also blending in with all the characters, all of which were done by by digital ink and paint from softwares like um, like Animeo, which would soon become known as Toon Boon Animation, and Silicon Graphics, which they team up so they can design some of the um, the elements of of all the uh, the scenes of the plagues, as well as the uh, the ocean of the Nile River, you know, f overflowing all the way up, you know, with all these raves and like all these other fire scenes and all everything. So they brought in together here. Um, plus, you got um, an assembled cast. So let's begin with this review. Bell Kilmer, uh, best known for films like Willow, along with Top Secret, Heat, 1995, Batman Forever, when he played Bruce Wayne and Batman, The Saint, and of course he played Doc Holliday in Tombstone. Ray Fiennes, um, who was in the movie Schindler's List, along with The English Patient, and Oscar and Lucinda. Michelle Pfeiffer from Scarface with Al Pacino and she went on to do films like um, Batman Returns as Catwoman and did some other um, movies like um, Dangerous Minds, Frankie and Johnny um, as well as um, Reese 2 well, the Fabulous Baker Boys, you know, those movies. Sandra Bullock uh, from Speed, uh, along with Demolition Man, Love Potion Number no. Nine, as well as uh, Gravity and um, Hope Floats, Practical Magic, yeah, Practical Magic. 
Jeff Goldblum from The Fly, The Fly remake from 1986. Yeah, he was also in Independence Day, Jurassic Park, along with the sequel, Lost World Jurassic Park. Um, many others. Danny Glover from Lethal Weapon movies, along with Witness, Wild America, and an uncredited role. Um, what else? Um, he was also in The Color Purple and Places in the Heart. Patrick Stewart from Star Trek The Next Generation as Captain John Luke Picard. The X Men movies. Um, Life Force, Conspiracy Theory, and other works that he's been doing, you know, like the TV films of Moby Dick, you know. Helen Mirren from, uh, from the movie uh, Where Angels Feared to Tread, The Cook, The Wife, The Thief, and The Lover, uh, as well as um, Red and um, some other films that she's been in. Steve Martin, of course, funny comedian from films like The, the Jerk, uh, The Man with Two Brains, uh, as well as um, The Lonely Guy, Dead Man Don't Wear Plod, Father of the Bride movies, yeah, remake and sequel, Free Amigos. Uh, Little Shop of Horrors remake, yeah, Roxanne, <laughs> my others, even Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. <laughs> Martin Short, um, also from Free Amigos, but he's also a stand-up comedian and been a regular for uh, SCTV and Saturday Night Live, and been in films like Clifford, Inner Space, um, Cross My Heart, Hope to Die. <laughs> Um, of course, the Friday of the Bride movies, Captain Wrong, uh, among others. Um, Ofra Hazar, who was a, um, an Israel um, singer, which unfortunately she passed away a long time ago. Um, they actually refer to her as the Israel Madonna. Bobby Moultown and Anne uh, Lockhart. It's uh, written by Philip Zepnik. That's based on the book of Exodus. And it's directed by three directors, uh, Brennan Chapman, along with Steve Hickner and Simon Wills, who happens to be the great-grandson of H.G. Wills. The movie begins in an ancient Egypt that's being run by a powerful ruler, King Pharaoh Seti, voiced by Patrick Stewart, who's joined by his wife, Queen Tuya, voiced by Helen Mirren, who rules the entire palace, yeah, owning all the Egyptian temples, statuettes, and other places that are being built when he hired um, Hubu slavery and even orders the guards and soldiers to do exactly what they're told. Yeah. Also bringing food and water supply and everything. And joining in with his high priest and many of his other followers along. Therefore, he fears that the alarming increase of Hubu slaves could lead to rebellion, so he orders his guards to kill all the newborn Hubu boys. Fearing for her own newborn son's safety, Yoshave, who is voiced by Hofa Haza, and she also sings too, joining in along with her two young children, Miriam and Aaron, who will soon become adults, voiced by Sandra Bullock and J Jeff Goldblum, they rush into the Nile River, where she places him in a basket into the water after bidding him farewell with a final but powerful lullaby, which is Deliver Us, the song. Miriam follows the basket as it sails all the way through Pharaoh's palace and witnesses her baby brother's safety by being adopted by Queen Tuya and names him Moses. Before leaving, Miriam prays that Moses will one day come back and sit 
their people free. Years later, Moses, who is now voiced by Bel Kilmer, as he grew older, with his adopted brother Rambesis, voiced by Ray Fiennes, they're going around on a chariot race, you know, just having fun. They really care for each other, and they're always beginning to know if they're going to even win or not. <laughs> and they're getting into bigger trouble, no matter what they do. Because they actually destroyed the entire temple that was ready to be built, accidentally. Um, Ramesses, who is now being hired for the throne of Egypt, he's being scolded by their father. Apparently, um, he gets into bigger trouble, but Moses wanted to take the blame because it was really his fault. But by his suggestion, Seti seeks to give uh, Ramesses the opportunity to prove that he's a responsible young man. I mean, by naming him Prince Regent. And I know when, when they get into trouble, yes, they even dumped, uh, I think it was sort of a, um, a big uh, bucket of water. It was all wet. It could be blood or something. <laughs> it might be juice. At um, the two high priests, uh, Hotep and Hai, both voiced by Steve Martin and Martin Short. Uh, but as a tribute, uh, they offer Ramesses a beautiful young Midianite woman, Zappara, voiced by Michelle Pfeiffer. Ramesses gives Zappara to Moses and appoints him as royal chief architect. Yeah, as he let go of the the rope. Later that night, Moses follows Zappara, who just escaped from the palace, tying up the guards and the dogs, and runs into Miriam and Aaron, who are now adults, but he does not recognize them. But apparently, Miriam knows that it was him. He was trying to tell him his true identity, but he refused to believe him. But Aaron tries to stop her because he thinks that she's just going nuts. But she knew that she was right. Because then Marion did, because Marion had sang their mother's lullaby, which somehow Moses remembers. And now he returns to the palace, eager to go back to his familiar surroundings. Because that's all he ever wanted, where the song plays. He wants to become the Egyptian prince. But that's what led to the truth about his past that's be later confirmed by a nightmare he has, which should showcase um, the Egyptian walls of drawings of Pharaoh Seti, who sent out the guards to take out all the Hebrew slaves, their newborn uh, child, and, and dumped it into the Nile River, where they're being eaten to death by alligators. Suddenly it disturbs him so much that he that finally by Seti himself he claimed that these Hebrews were only slaves. So they had so sacrificing them is for the greater good. And then uh, he, he spoke to um, his mother Tuya about why was he chosen. Apparently, that's exactly what Seti wanted. He wanted to become what everyone wants, a prince. But things got worse by the next day when Moses accidentally pushes an Egyptian guard to his death while trying to stop him from ripping an elderly, an old elderly Hebrew slave. He was being so horrified and ashamed of himself that Moses decided to free into the desert in exile, you know, despite of Rembrandt's play for him to stay. And while he was at the desert into Israel, where it's being, um, being plumbished by um, a huge desert cloud, um, they're being found by all the camels, that's joined by three young girls that saved them of Brakans, but they then found out that Sephora was their sisters. So he was being broken by 
Zephyrah's father, who's the high priest of Midian, named Jephro, who's voiced by Danny Glover. After assuming into this new culture, Moses became a shepherd and married Zephyrah, who one day, while chasing a stray lamb, he discovers a burning bush, which at this rate reveals the messenger of God that tells him to return to Egypt and guide the Hebrews to freedom. But he doesn't know how. But God bestows Moses' shepherding by using a staff with his power that can actually turn this particular staff into a king cobra or it can turn into pretty much any other. You know, it's almost like a magic wand right there. But he does his promise to do exactly what Moses had to say. Uh, but he promised uh, Moses that, he, that God is going to tell him exactly what he was told to do. So then Moses and Zechariah have returned to Egypt, where Moses is happily greeted by Ramesses, who is now the king of Pharaoh, taking over from his father, his throne, and he now has a wife and son. So now Tuya and Sati are deceased. Moses requests the Hebrews uh, release by changing his staff into the cobra and demonstrate his alliance with God. But Hotep and Hyde both re recreated this transformation by using their own powerful spells, you know, all this magic tr tricks that they're doing, you know, w which led to the song, You're Playing with the Big Boys Now. <laughs> You know, using all the smokes and mirrors and all. But of course, um, joining in with all these other snakes, they're already being eaten by this cobra snake. <laughs> For Moses. But not wanting to have his actions causing the empire to collapse, Ramesses hardens and doubles the Hebrews' workload, and that's what led to Moses uh, inflicting all the nine of the ten plagues of Egypt, which that means... He's going to take the staff, turn the entire river into blood. But Hotep and Hyde decided to use it exactly on their own, so they knew that they can do it. But Moses explained to all the slaves and everyone of his people that while Pharaoh can may take everything and their freedom, the only thing that they can't take is their faith. So that's exactly what he couldn't do. So it continues with all the plagues, such as frogs, locusts, wild beasts, or any other kind. You know, fire, even water. And most of all, the heroine, the angel of death, yeah, which is a vaporized uh, plague that's going to hit through all the doorsteps that's marked by lamb's blood. So... Through the night, um, the plague is going to hit directly through um, several of the newborn childs around, or for those who are first newborn, and they're going to be the ones uh, either going to be killed or not. And that's what happened to um, Pharaoh's, uh, Rambus's son. Because he refused to listen. But the point is, if Ramses is not going to let Moses' people go, then this is exactly what he's going to suffer. At this rate, already grief sticken, Ramses had finally gave Moses the permission to free the Hebrews. But after leaving the palace, Moses collapsed and sobs in grief after what happened. And which causes the heartbroken at the pain that he caused by his brother in Egypt. So now, by the following morning, the Hebrews, led by Moses, um, joining in with Miriam, Aaron, and Zephyrah, decided to leave Egypt and going directly into the Red Sea. So they go all the way straight into Israel, uh, which actually led to the song, When You Believe. Uh, once they made it to the Red Sea, they discovered that 
vengeful Rambuses has pursuing them, so they're about to join in with all the guards and soldiers to go after Moses and his Hebrews, as uh, Moses just took the staff, sticks it into the ocean, and that's where it splits apart, so that way all the Hebrews can go all the way straight into Israel. But by the time Ramesses had showed up, along with the guards and the soldiers ready to attack, um, Moses had used the staff and just actually takes the ocean going back to its place and washing out all the soldiers and guards and even Ramesses. So now he's all alone um, in the rocks. And... Um, Moses and the rest of the people had led to freedom. But Moses had sadly bids farewell to his brother and now leads the Hebrews to Mount Sinai where he does receive the Ten Commandments. And that's where the film ends. Yep, this was a powerful, compelling story of the book of Exodus. Um, it had some really wonderful breathtaking animation all done by um, traditional hand-drawn animation blending in with CGI I mean I love the way it looks you know how they use all the luscious colors and the way the characters have been animated I know these animators that took a lot of time touring Egypt and they even went to Death Valley trying to get all the details right and I know this was a lot of hard work it has been like two years, you know, trying to put everything together, you know, even with pre-biz and all, to finally complete this running time. Um, they had, the cast was excellent. They lend their voices exactly as they were chosen here. Um, Bell Kilmer's uh, performance really uh, outshines this movie as Moses. And this was a very powerful performance as he ever done. Um, same goes with Ray Fiennes as Ramesses, his uh, brother who isn't exactly his real brother, knowing that his real brother, of course, is his biological one, Aaron. But he did have a sister, also biological, uh, Miriam, by Sandra Bullock. Um... So you got a lot of great actors too. Um, Danny Glover was great as Jeffro. Uh, Patrick Stewart, along with Helen Mirren, um, were excellent as Sati and Tuya. Um, Steve Martin and Martin Short were hilarious as Hotep and Hai. I do wish they had a lot of comic timing, or at this rate, I wish they had plenty of uh, voice time for them, but they did exactly what they could. Uh, same goes with the rest of the cast. Uh, and Sapphira, uh, voiced by Michelle Pfeiffer, is luminous. But, I mean, of course, at first, I mean, she couldn't trust Moses until later on. And that's how she became um, Moses' love interest and, and wife. Um, so I know they had to do a lot of work and energy to put it all together hoping that this will be as accurate and of course it had a wonderful score by Hans Zimmer he did a great job with that um, I love all the music that they provided by and also uh, the soundtrack uh, joining in by lyrics uh, by lyricist uh, Stephen Schwartz who went on to do um, Wicked and Enchanted, uh, with all the great songs, um, especially the Oscar winning um, for best original song, When You Believe, that was sung by the late great Whitney Houston. Got, yeah, she was such a powerful vocalist, uh, joining in with Mariah Carey. And I do love Mariah Carey too. Really love that song, and I love all the other songs that follow. They even have a song by Boyz II Men called I Will Get There. That's another great song. I know there are plenty of other ones that follow. 
It may not be in the movie, but but it sure had a big soundtrack for its time. The song says that they were performed as he tells the story straight. I love all the moments with the chariot race, which, you know, it almost felt like Ben-Hur in there, too. So it's sort of like a tribute to that. We have Moses and Remesis racing each other before they had to get into all these accidents. I mean, that was a great moment. And all these breathtaking um, scenes, too, were... Moses just opens up uh, the ocean using his staff or using all of his tricks or any of the other um, magical um, scenes that they put in. Just amazing. There is, of course, a direct-to-video prequel called Joseph in the Kingdom of Dreams that came out uh, two years later. Uh, it was supposed to take place before the Prince of Egypt, uh, which actually had Ben Affleck providing the voice of Joseph, and it's supposed to be focusing on the book of Genesis. Well, um, not a bad film, quite decent, um, but by comparison, I mean, it's kind of clunky for the story. And the short running time it it actually provide, I mean, a lot shorter than ever. I mean, maybe it needed to be extended a little more, but that's the case. I, I haven't seen it in a long time, but maybe I might take my chances. Uh, it was a big hit. Uh, it came out on December 18th during the holiday season. Um, for a 70 million budget, it only made 200 and 18.6 million. So it was the highest grossing uh, non-Disney animated feature ever. And I saw the movie in Oregon. Uh, it was at that uh, multiplex theater called the Oak Grove 8 Cinemas. One of the cleanest theaters I've been to. But it was right next to Albertsons and as well as Taco Bell and Round Table Pizza. But I know that Albertsons is now uh, grocery outlet <laughs> yeah uh, but that was a long time ago I was only uh, 13 years old I was almost hitting 14 but um, I had a wonderful time I mean it was definitely biblical and and it was very strong and um, I really um, admired it uh, considering the fact that I am a Catholic so I, I could definitely follow the story as exactly as, as it could be. I mean, I know it's hard to do a story like this, just as long as, you know, they don't cause any riots or anything like that. Because I, I know that they had suffered from censorship from other countries. Even, in, even Egypt itself, I mean, they actually banned this film. I couldn't believe it. But I think it took some time until they finally uh, got it. Uh, worldwide on home video so knowing that seeing this is part of the religion I think that's why they were afraid um, but nevertheless I mean they did an excellent job and it's definitely one of the best uh, films ever made from DreamWorks seeing that they were a full-fledging studio at the time and knowing that between this film and Ants that they continue to go on to their journey to all the future DreamWorks films that we got, you know, such as Shrek, Madagascar, um, Sinbad, um, and all the others that we got. Yeah. So anyway, this is the perfect animated feature to watch, even in Easter, even if you're religious or not. It's definitely the film that you need to watch more and more and also it really holds up all this time so anyway that's the Prince of Egypt and I give the film five stars I'm Joseph A. Sabora and I'll see you later bye